Hi, hello students. I'm right now in Sydney, Australia. I flew into Sydney last Feb 28th. And uh, so I'm now, uh, I, I'm now living in the hotel quarantine. <laughs> and that's why I uh, had a lot of preparations to make before the departure. Um, but um, the show must go on. So uh, I'm conducting now this video lecture about your um, fundamental analysis and how to forecast the stock market prices using the possible high and low prices in the future based on high and low PER times the forecasted earnings per share for the future. It's, as you can tell, it's one of my favorite subjects. So <laughs> even if I'm groggy from jet lag, I, I, I like to talk about this topic. And uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put up the PowerPoint now for you to see what it's like. Uh, and I'm going to start with this discussion of um, share prices, high and low. Um, our discussion for today is to review how share prices normally go up and down, but then they're relative to a certain earnings per share. So you measure whether they are earnings per share times 10 or times 20, times 10, times 20, how they move back and forth between a high and low price or PER. And then based on that, you just have to forecast the movement upward of the earnings per share. And then uh, you'll be able to say, on some, sometimes in the year, it's going to have this high price and sometimes in the year, it's going to have this low price. So it's going to be between the high and the low, the share price will probably move between this uh, between this low price and this high price. So there's a band of price movement based on the EPS moving up and the normal ups and downs of that price to earnings ratio. Uh, this is how stockbrokers do it. And this is how they figure out whether this stock has been uh, down for some months. So therefore they think it's going to move up as part of its normal upward movement uh, on that parang snaking uh, path up, up into the future. So uh, the first page is about how to forecast share prices given that there's uh, movement high and low, uh, at least on the screen of the PowerPoint if you can see it in the other video. There's a green line and a red line. Okay, Green line and a red line and then the price fluctuates between the green and the red. Um, anytime that it's near the red line, stockbroker will say time to buy. Anytime it's near the green line, uh, it's already at the high of the year, so maybe time to sell or stop buying. And because I think it's going to start flowing down, not drastically down, but flowing down and then eventually up again. So that's the uh, stockbroker sense of what is going to happen to this stock. And the more he studies a particular stock, the longer he reads it, then the more he can predict what will happen the next few months. So therefore, in the second part of this lecture, I'll show you the, the, the Excel file again where we do our forecasting based on past EPS, past high and low prices of the, of the stock. Therefore, we generate the high and low PER. And then we multiply that against the EPS that is forecasted for 2021, 20, 22, 23, 24. And then we'll generate a high and low price for those years. That's our... And that's the content of our forecasting the stock market. And then um, after that, I'll show you how some stockbrokers actually uh, submit their best forecast for the price of stock A, B, C, D, E. They submit it to Bloomberg. And then all of those forecasts for the stock price are summarized by Bloomberg. Bloomberg is a company that provides financial data, and they also gather the forecasts of the uh, financial analysts who say that, I think this stock, Meralco, should be at 300 pesos today. And somebody else says, I think it should be 250 as of today. So each one is entitled to his own opinion. But what Bloomberg does is to get the opinions of the top 10 experts and summarize them. So... They will tell you that the uh, that somebody predicts that Moralco will be at 350. Somebody says 250. The average is 300. And then that's how we come up with a consensus price forecast. 
right? So part one, I review why there are high and low prices because mainly people are free to buy stocks whenever they want. And therefore, there are high, there are high rallies and there are low declines of the share prices. And then you get the average. You also get the high and low range. Number two, you forecast the EPS so that you can figure out what will be the earnings of the company the next few years. And then you multiply that EPS times the high and the low PER. And then you'll generate a, a straight line of possible high price, possible low price. It's in the Excel sheet. After you do that, then you already know how it's done and you don't have to do it again. So fortunately for you, this is just to appreciate how stockbrokers do this uh, hocus pocus and mambo jumbo about the earnings per share and price earnings ratio. And then uh, once they do that, okay, so you already know how they, how they bake the cake. And all you have to do is buy the cake afterwards uh, from the bakery, uh, fresh, hot off the oven. Okay, so part one is we'll talk again about why there are high and low share prices because of the normal flows of money throughout the stock market. Because people can buy whenever they want and they can sell whenever they want. That's why there's movements up and down of share prices. So there's a normal high, uh, looking at the PowerPoint, normal wave of high prices, low prices, and high prices again. Okay, so next slide is uh, as long as the earnings per share is moving up, then the share price tends to move up also. Okay, that's 80% of the reason why the share price moves up is that there's earnings per share moving up. Uh, I'll get some water to drink, scusi. <clears throat> All right, so then, uh, the if the earnings per share is moving up, then earning, share prices move up. But if earnings per share is moving sideways or flat, then share prices probably will also move sideways or flat. So that's the that's the conclusion. And um, um, as long as earnings per share is moving in this direction, for example, that that direction, then. Uh, you, can, you can predict that the share price will be sort of zigzagging above and below, above and below, a certain average line here, above and below, so that you will see a high and a low uh, price channel. Okay. Uh, whenever it's at the high uh, price, then, of course, price earnings ratio is high and the stock is expensive. Whenever it's at the low price, the price is low and the stock is inexpensive and it's good to buy. Okay, so I remember that I explained this in terms of high tide and low tide in the beach. If it's low tide, then uh, you can see the rocks. And then if it's high tide, then the, the waves wash up high up the shore. And then it, the water recedes again for low tide, and then it moves up again for high tide. And that's what happens in money flowing into the stock market and pulling out money flowing into the stock market and pulling out so when should you buy the stocks well when it's low tide so you buy when it's cheap and then you sell when prices are high and they're expensive okay um so my example says that there's eps of one and two and then three pesos per share over three years and you notice that the price on year one is ranging from 10 to 15 pesos from say january to f march for example so if the low price is 10 and the high price is 15 then you know already the parang minimum and maximum for the year so far is 10 and 15 and if you divide 10 by 1 and 15 by 1 you'll generate the price earnings ratio of 10 and 15 now you know that the price fluctuates between a price earnings ratio of 10 and 15. Why is that important? Because EPS next year will be 2 pesos per share, not anymore 1. But you can easily get the possible high price next year by multiplying 2 times 15, and then the low price is 2 times 10. Diba? So um, possible high price next year will be 30, and then the low price will be 20. And then uh, the same high and low PER of 15 and 10 will be multiplied times the EPS of 3. So 3 times 15 would be 45 and 3 times 10 is 10, uh, 30. 
30. Um, so uh, you can see that the share price can move uh, between, okay, in year one, it's been moving 10 to 15. Year two, it can, it can move 20 to 30. And then year three, it can logically move 30 to 45. Okay. Uh, so I clean up in the next slide, I clean up all those prices and you can see that the range in the first year is likely to be 15 and 10, second year 30 and 20, and then the third year between 30 and 45. And if you buy the stock at 15, then you can make money all the way until 45 in the third year. And if you're not so lucky, then the share price moves only up to 30 in the third year, but 15 to 30 is double your money already. Excuse. Now, um, let's say that you bought the stock not at 15 but at 10. Um, would you be fortunate over the next two years? And the answer is yes. For the next two years, we think that the stock will be, at least in year two, will hit a low price of 20 and year three, a uh, low price of 30. So just by buying the stock at 10 and holding on to it, then you can reach a price of 30 by year three. All right, so 10, 20, 30, that's triple your money in three years. It's a good investment or worthwhile bet. Meanwhile, if your 10 pesos goes all the way to 45, then you're extremely lucky and you multiply your money times 4.5. Okay, we don't know if it's going to happen, but it, there's a chance. There's a possibility and that's the best you can do. You can calculate the odds, the probabilities, the chances. And if you think that 10 could be 30, or even become 45, then 10 is good to buy. Buy at 10, wait until it's 20, 30, maybe 4.5, sorry, 45. Uh, so you could multiply your money times three or times 4.5. And what's the, what's the downside potential? Not so, not so clear that there is downside potential here. Um, there's a 5% probability that the company will not have good earnings per share next year for example, you're forecasting next year 2 pesos. Kung hindi natupad, then it's going to be maybe only 1 peso per share. So flat earnings growth, 1 peso, 1 peso flat. For year 3, if it's, you're forecasting 3 pesos per share, if it's lower than 3, then uh, bad news somewhere. right? So that's the only condition that would prevent you from buying uh, a stock with these forecasts. Okay, so the next slide shows you how I applied this logic to um, Ayala Corporation where I get the share price moving um, moving up and down, up and down, up and down, and then I project it into the future because I projected the earnings per share into the future and then I multiply it times the normal high PER and normal low PER to generate the possible low and possible high prices for the next four years. Okay, and I did the same for SM Investments where I see a possible low and high. Um, well, first of all, I see the earnings per share moving up over time. And then I multiply it by the high and low price earnings ratio to generate the possible high prices and low prices for the next three years. And because of that, I was able to generate a, a, a blue line that's like the minimum and a brown line that's like the maximum for this stock to move back and forth over the next few years. At any time during the year, I don't know where the stock is going to be, but it will probably be between these two lines of blue and brown, at least in this, in this slide. Other people use different colors, of course. But uh, I'm speculating that this stock, which is at around 970 pesos per share, could eventually reach 1,600 in about four years. So if you're now at 970 and you could reach 1,600 in four years, okay, na yan. that's a good stock to buy. All right, so this is, um, you, you're not guaranteeing anything and you're, you're not even saying it's 80% uh, sure, no, no such thing. It's like, uh, the, to the best of your ability, this is my forecast. And ikaw nang bahala to, to take the responsibility to buy the stock if you do want to buy it and it's your lookout. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, so okay, the next topic is about what's the definition of price-earnings ratio. I'll, I'll skip that. I'll go now to the Excel sheet. Uh, close this. Go to the Excel sheet. And, and so the first tab that I show you is about index and earnings. 
where the chart is about the index, the normal prices of the PSE index, the top 30 stocks. And you can see it's moving up, down, up again, and down in 2020. So the reason for the ups and downs of the share prices is because uh, the, the earnings per share is either moving up and down up and down, up again, and then down again. So, so it just follows earnings per share roughly. <laughs> What's the charger doing there? Uh, so that's the tab on index and earnings. I'll go next to rising share price tab. And the, the, the example here is that you have, okay, so you have year one, you have an earnings per share of five, year two, eight, and then 12, and then 15, and then 18, and 23. So this is a uh, earnings per share that is part historical and part forecast. And then you notice that the range of the price earnings ratio is 20 and 10, 20 and 10, 20 and 10, 20 and 10. So therefore, if you, uh, you derive this 20 and 10 price earnings ratio in the first part of the story, you derive the, the high and low price earnings ratio by saying, the high price of the stock and the low price divided by the EPS gives you the, the range of the price earnings ratio on a 20 and 10, 20 and 10, 20 and 10. So you derive the 20 and the 10 of the range of the price earnings ratio. And then you project it into the future and multiply it by the rising EPS. And that, then it generates the high and low share prices for the forecast years. So in this example, look at the Look at the range of the share price for year one. It's 100 to 50. Okay, 100 to 50. If you divide 100 by 5, you get 20. If you divide 100 by, uh, sorry, if you divide 50 by 5, you get 10. And that's how you got the price earnings ratio of between 20 and 10. Okay, for year two, the high price was 160 and the low price was 80. So you divide 160 by 8, you will get 20, uh, a PER of 20. And if you divide 80 by 8, you'll get a low PER of 10. That's the low price earnings ratio. Excuse me. So, assuming that the range still holds true, then we start using 20 and 10, 20 and 10 to the future EPS. Uh, I think in this case, I'm using, uh, I'll start forecasting by year 5 and 6. Yeah, I'm forecasting year 5. I'm saying that year 5 uh, is 18 pesos per share. That's a forecast. I think I'm going to mark it uh, yellow. I'm going to just color it yellow. Okay, so uh, 18 yung year 5 EPS and then year 6 is 23. So now I multiply 18 times 10, that's 180, and that becomes the po potential low price for year uh, five, yeah, that's potential low price forecast for year five. And then yung uh, 18 times 20 will give you 360. That's the forecasted high price for year five. Now, what about year six? <clears throat> Excuse me. Year six is an EPS of 23. And then you multiply it by the possible high PER of 20. 23 times 20 gives you 460. And then the potential low price is derived from 23 EPS times 10, the low PER, gives you 230. Okay. So 230 is the possible low price for year 6. All right. And that's how we've managed to forecast the high and low prices for year five and six. By uh, look at the yellow eighteen and the yellow twenty three. That's the forecasted EPS. Um, the analyst says, "I think this company made EPS of fifteen last year, and I think it will easily make eighteen this year and twenty three the year after that." Okay, if everyone agrees that it's a reasonable forecast, we use it in this forecast equation and you say 18 times 20 18 times 10 to get the possible high and low prices so and the same with year 6 23 times 20 23 times 10 gives you 
possible high price of 460 or a low price of 230. And then you check where the price is at any given month of the year. So let's say that you're forecasting that in this particular year, the price will move between 230 and 460. Okay, so where is it now? Is it close to 230 near the bottom? Then you can tell all your clients to start buying the stock plenty. But if you find that the price is already at 460 for that year, then you tell all your clients to sell all of their shares because that's the possible highest price for the year and it can only go lower from that point onwards. From that point onwards, the price cannot reasonably go above 460. It should go down to 400, 350, 300, back down to 230, and then up again. So that's the normal cycle of the stock of its highs and lows. Okay, the next tab is the assignment where you do one spreadsheet completo with the forecast all the way to 2024 following this same method. Um, what's the method? The method is, <laughs> let me recap. Okay, so the assignment is, okay, so you've got uh, profits here in the first line divided by the number of shares gives you the earnings per share. So if you press F, if you press on the earnings per share cell and then you press F2, you will see the formula, which is profit divided by number of shares. Okay, tapos uh, you get the share price for the past years, the high and the low share price for the past years. And then you will be able to say share price high divided by EPS is the high PER for that past year. And then share price low for that year divided by the EPS again, for example, 144 divided by 12, gives you 12 as the low PER for that year. And then you'll generate a, a, a row of low, high and low price earnings ratio, which you will project into the future. Okay, and then you multiply the high and low PER times the EPS forecast to generate the share price high and low. I hope you follow. And in this example of the, okay, this example of a sample company, and I'm going to ask you to type in a real company, uh, a real listed company with uh, profit information and number of shares information from 2016 onwards up to 2019 would be the last uh, audited statements. And then you 2020 is probably a decline of 30% or 50%, probably. And then the one of the earnings for 2021 will be probably a recovery to close to the 2019 level of profits. Uh, for very competitive companies, they can move back to their 2019 level after suffering the decline of 2020. For non-competitive companies, they'll take four years to get back to their level of operations of 2019. There are some companies in the internet space that have actually made more sales in the past pandemic year than ever before. That's because they're based on internet and computers and online communications like Zoom. So the share price of Zoom had a great year in 2020. So looking at this example, the profits were in 2016, 5, naging 10, naging 18, naging 28. I forecast that it drops 20% to 23, just as a sample decline for 2020. And then I forecast that it moves up 20% to 20 in the year 2021 uh, and so it goes back up to 28 if you think it's doable then use a 20 percent gain if you think it's not doable then keep the profits lower still at uh, 23 bill, uh, million pesos and then the profits for 2022 are 34 followed by 40 and then 49 those are just assuming that the profits can grow 20 percent a year 
Now, if you think the 20% is too high, uh, baka 10% lang, then use 10%. If you think that 20% is too low, that the shares of the sales of this company are growing 50% per year, go ahead and use 50%. So it's your job as an analyst to use a reasonable number that fits the development of this company. Is it a young company with fast growing sales or is it an old company with declining sales? So you have to check if it's a company with, with a young product, innovative, and everybody's trying to buy it. So therefore, the sales will be terrific. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> or you could check if it's already selling a mature product, uh, for example, oil refinery, and they're not anymore selling, uh, making big money on oil refinery. In fact, so many oil refineries in the world have closed down because they're not competitive. Even Shell Refinery in Batangas decided that we're not going to refine anymore. We'll just buy the refined product out of Malaysia and Thailand and sell it locally. So the so former refinery in Batangas is just going to become a receptacle for the incoming refined products. And they won't bother refining it locally. Before we had, before the Philippines in general had the advantage of labor that was relatively cheaper than the West and now uh, it's not so cheap anymore and also the quality of the labor is not as good as in other places. So you have people here who can do us who have certain skills for low pay but the people abroad have a lot higher skills for commensurate pay and they get more done in less time than our guys here who have uh, low pay but also low skills and they can't complete the assignment so it becomes competitive to therefore ask other people abroad to do the work and then we'll just buy the finished product it's cheaper that way than if we try to do it ourselves and we find out that we don't have the skills to to do it and uh, in, in in less time or better output so unfortunately that's the economics of the situation we haven't upgraded our skill levels for our industrial workers. So that's why other people can accomplish more industrially in less time, greater output, lower cost. Now, uh, in this example, the year 21, uh, the number of shares is constant at 1.8 million. So therefore, your EPS forecast is a simple matter of dividing the profits of 23, 28, 34, 40, 49. You divide it by the number of shares. And then you get 13, 15.6, 18.72, 22.46, 26.96. Okay? You don't actually need the two decimal places. You can uh, make it no decimal places. Works fine. And then... Uh, because you have the EPS already, you multiply that EPS times the 16 high PER to get 208. And then the 13, you multiply that again by the 12 low PER to get the 156. And then once your formula is okay for the column of 2020, you copy that formula to the right, copy, and then all the numbers will follow correctly. So you just have to do it for one column and then copy to the right. The same thing with the 156. Once that formula is set, kunyari walang nakasulat sa kanan, 156, copy, and then move to the right, and then you generate all the correct forecasted low prices for that year. So um, that's how to do the assignment. Do it for one of your uh, favorite stocks, and that's how you forecast. Okay, so you'll just, I guess... Uh, do this analysis for your chosen stock and submit to me by email. It's okay if people uh, overlap, I mean, have the same company, same favorite company, as long as they don't have the exact same EPS forecast numbers. Because uh, one guy thinks that, I mean, you can't have two guys thinking that the EPS is exactly going to move up 20%, 20 20.33345%. Sobrang precise naman yung pagka exacto nung same opinion you you can have different opinions one guy says you can, you can analyze the same company but say that 
I think the EPS will be growing 20% and the other guy says 25 and the other guy says 15. So that, that you can submit as different opinions. Talagang in, in the, like in the real world, you have different opinions as long as you're generating your own estimates and you're not copying from others. Well, you, you, can, you can copy Mona, pero please change the percentage growth rates. Diba? So you can use that shortcut, copy first, and then uh, change the percentage growth rates. And then, okay na, yan. okay na yan. So as long as you generate the share price high and share price low for the fourth coming years of up to 2024. All right? So that's the assignment. Um, for max, how do you see formulas? Okay. Okay. So th that's the trick. And then I have Ayala Corp raw data. Okay. And then I have Ayala Corp sample. Okay. So, and that, and then eventually once you input, I'm now looking at the chart, the, the graph of the sh share prices of Ayala Corp. So there uh, is the forecast for Ayala Corp recovering from the dip of 2020 and moving up uh, to 2021, 22. Okay, so the the share price dropped all the way to 478 and it's forecast to move up in 2021 to a possible high of 1099. Uh, okay, na to, for your money to go from 478 to 1099, that's uh, double the price. Except that it takes a very brave person to buy at 478, not knowing what the future holds. Uh, so therefore, it's just the bravest investors who will buy when the prices have dropped. And to be first and be pioneer, it really takes bravery to do that. Which I recommend that you develop. <laughs> and then, uh, even if you buy at 787 and then the price goes up to 1099, you still make some money. So to be able to buy Ayala Corporation from the possible low price of the year and then trade it up to the high price of the year is already a profitable trade from 785 to 1099. All right, so that's one way that you can trade the range, low of the range, the high of the range, buy at the low, sell at the high, that's trading the range. And then uh, you, we did the same for the PLDT raw data. We did the same calculations. Uh, you, can, you can fill in the blanks with this one, please, as an exercise. And then once you do that, the chart for PLDT on this tab is going to, you know, from being down like that, it's going to start moving up like that. Once you fix the numbers, the chart will adjust, okay? The next uh, tab is SM raw data with SM calculations for EPS and the SM chart, which you will see is like moving. Uh, the brown line at the bottom is the possible low price and the blue line up, up above is the possible high price of the year up to 2024. And that's how you have forecasted the share price, the low and the high up to 2024. And so all you have to do is check, is it close to the low price? Yes, then buy the stock. Is it close to the high price, the blue line? Is it? If it's yes, then sell the stock because it's at the highest point of the year, right? So you buy when it's near the low and you sell when it's near the high. That's how you trade the range. If you don't want to trade the range, you just have to buy the stock today and hold it for five years because anyway, it's on its way up. So that's what you call buy and hold long term. And that's the style of pension funds, retirement funds. They buy for 40 years. They buy for 40 years, especially life insurance. A life insurance client starts buying insurance at the age of 22, and he probably retires at the age of 62. And uh, if, he's, if he's lucky, he lives longer than 62. But in case he dies, then the life insurance has money to pay the claims to the beneficiaries. Scusi. Okay, so back to the Excel sheet. There's Meralco raw data and there's an exercise for practice. So type over the sample numbers. And then it will generate a chart of EPS for Meralco the moment you fill in those numbers. There's AC ranges forecast which shows you how I forecasted with a green line. Pa. Uh, that green line is speculation. 
I don't actually know if the share price will follow that green line. I only suspect that it will be that the share price will be between the blue line and the brown line. <laughs> that's all. Between the blue and the brown line, that's all I know is likely to happen. But uh, I just, artist conception, developed a wiggly line that will somehow make it more tangible for the clients that uh, this is a up and down market. And even despite all that, your share price from 940 can still go up to 1525 And that's good money. Diba? So that tells you that this investment is worth holding for four years. Okay? Now, uh, where is the... Uh, let's say that we're checking Ayala Corporation and we see that the price is near the the blue line, which is the low price for the year. What should be our recommendation? We see that it's near the low price for the year, we should say buy. If it's near the high price of the year, we should say sell. So it just moves back and forth between the low and the high. And you check if it's, uh, if it's over uh, the high price of the range, then you call your clients and say sell. And if it's the, near the low price of the range, call all your clients and say buy. Okay. Now, um, I'm gonna move now to the to the um, consensus corner. So here's a file which is I'm gonna share with you. It's called <coughs> Scusi. It's called the Consensus Corner for February 26, and it's updated every two weeks. Let's look at Ayala Corporation number here. It says the price of Ayala Corporation is 748 as of 26 Feb. And then the forward PE is 18.63. And then the consensus target price is 923, 923. So therefore, if you buy a Yala Corp at 748 and then you hold it until it reaches the consensus target price of 923 pesos, then you will make 23% gain on your investment. Um, again, so what's the price to, of a Yala Corporation on 26 Feb? It's 748. Is it gonna go? Is it going to seven nine twenty three for sure? No, uh, nothing's for sure. It's just likely. It's just probable. And what's the reward in case you buy it at seven forty eight and it does reach nine twenty three? The reward is twenty three percent gain on your investment. So that's therefore the consensus rating is buy. So it says there buy on the screen. Right. Uh, there's the other stocks. They have a, a potential profit of 11, 31, 19, 22. It's a potential profit. Does it mean you should buy the ones with the highest potential profit? No. Because uh, it might never reach the potential target price. It might never. It might be always below potential. It's like a student who is bright but doesn't study. Uh, in any high school, you can find students who, have, who are good in math and science, but they don't, they don't study. So instead of their grades being line of nine, assuming that 100 is the highest and line of nine is top quality, then line of eight would be second best. So there are students with bright brains and great ability, but they're so lazy that they only score 80s in the grade instead of 90s. So they don't even reach summa uh, cum laude status. So don't, don't look at your classmates. I'm, I'm sure they will be, feel offended. Uh, I'm sure your classmates are all summa cum laude. So... Look elsewhere. Look across the street. Diba? So, yung potential ng stock is 23%, but it doesn't mean that every single stock on this list will hit the target. Only those which have a reason to move. And the, the name of that reason is Catalyst. Um, if Ayala Corporation 
publishes news that they have more contracts, more business, more alliances, more sales, uh, more good news, then it's likely that the share price from the 748 level will start moving up to 923 if there's plenty of good news. Okay? Yung 923 is the level which all analysts think would be the would be the price of Ayala Corporation today if all the good, good news pops out. But the good news hasn't popped out yet, hasn't come up yet. It's not yet in the newspaper. So therefore, the share price is still waiting there at 748 kasi wala pang news. So when should you buy the stock? Before the news or after the news? If you, if you think that there's a reasonably good chance that the good news will come up, then you go ahead and buy the stock at 748 and wait for the good news to come out. If you have no trust and confidence in this company, they're, if you think that they're not good managers, then don't, don't buy the stock and don't recommend it. So there's some judgment involved in, in selecting stocks. Uh, you, you choose among those with good potential profit, but you rank them according to most likely to succeed or they have possible catalyst coming up over the horizon that will be something like an announcement of good news or uh, that they have good sales. And how do you know this? If they announce, for example, that they're in talks, excuse me, if they're in talks with a real estate company in another country for an alliance, then that's possible good news. That means that they will have more business in the future. Or if there's an announcement that they're looking to buy a plantation somewhere in a province which is a big piece of land that therefore they can use for this purpose that will make money, then that's another potential good news. And once it's announced that they were able to purchase the land, then you have the reason for uh, for the share price to continue moving towards the target of nine. 923 okay so this is how to read the consensus target price it's the share price at which the, sh the stock should move as long as the good news that is anticipated comes up all right so there uh, any questions um, so this this consensus um, corner Consensus Corner publication comes up every two, every other Friday. So this becomes a good basis for selecting stocks that you think have potential to move up. And then you just make a list of them stocks which have good potential uh, profit. And then you think uh, a little bit as to which one has the catalyst coming up. And so therefore, uh, I will buy first the ones that I believe will have... <sighs> In the end, you have to look at the crystal ball. Meron ka ng hard numbers, but you st still have to look at the crystal ball. So I'm sorry to say, there's really no hard and fast rule about uh, where to, what stock to buy. One broker will say, I have this list of five stocks that are my favorites because I think they're going to move up soon. They have catalysts. What catalyst? Wala pa, pero magkakaroon. And then the other broker says, I have this opposing list of five different stocks that I think will move up soon. Forget the other guy, buy my list of five stocks. So, labanan yung brokers as to who can make a, uh, a recommended batch of stocks which will move up the fastest. Okay? Wh whoever broker recommends a good basket of stocks and it goes up 20% while the other one goes down negative 10%, this broker whose recommendations went up 20% will get promoted and get bonus and get higher salary because the clients who uh, get rewarded from listening to him. All right, so 
that's how it works in the industry. And those who are consistently, uh, oh, sorry, those who are often wrong get fired or don't really get promoted in the industry. The only exception that I can think of is there was a guy in Manila who in the 1990s was consistently wrong. So whenever he said buy, the stock would go down. And whenever he said sell, the stock would go up. So everyone started listening to him because if he says buy, they just run to the stock exchange and sell. And whenever he says sell, they run to the stock exchange and they buy because they know he is consistently wrong. So may benefit yung makinig sa kanya. Okay, I think that uh, sums up our trimester. The consensus corner finally tells you what's the price of the stock now and what's the forecast price, which is the consensus target price, and what would be your potential profit and loss uh, from buying that stock at the today's price and holding it until it reaches consensus target price. Okay, uh, who figured out that the consensus target price is 923? It's 10 different brokers submitting their, con their target prices and it's summarized and averaged into the consensus target price. Uh, some of them think it's higher than 923, 923. Some of them think it's lower than, but they just averaged it out. All right. Should we believe them? Uh, it's up to you. It's up to you. You can disregard all of them make your own calculations if you're more expert than they are. You could use them as a guide, but not as a fail-safe guide, foolproof guide, but rather you, you gather the list of those with good profit potential, those with green numbers, and then you, one by one, you decide whether this stock is good, this stock is bad, this stock is good. I would buy this and I would buy that. Okay, and I recommend that you do that on your own using your independent judgment and don't tell anybody else. The moment you tell other people, they will, they, they might criticize you without knowing your basis. And it's none of their business, so don't tell anybody. You just mind your own business and mind your own portfolio. And you take note of the stocks that you called correctly, that it, you think it's going up and it went up, or those that you called wrongly, you think it's going up but it went down. And then you write in your journal, I, I was good with stock A, I was bad with stock B. You write a diary and you start learning from your mistakes. Unfortunately, this is learning by trial and error. It's really like many things that are practical in life, you have to try it out and it works. You try it, you try it out, sometimes it doesn't work until you figure out what works 80% of the time. And uh, that's the constant search for the quick and easy method to make money. I think there's none. It's just arduous, difficult, taxing methods to make money. And then uh, you'll be so exhausted that in the end, you might just say, shucks, I'll just hire a manager to manage my money, which is actually uh, a shortcut. All right, so when you reach that conclusion that this is so difficult that I'll just leave it in the hands of a competent professional, then uh, you have reached a conclusion that uh, I don't need to be in control. I just need to know what's going on. And then I want to give instructions to the fund manager that he should target aggressive growth na 15% per year with this money, which I think I'm going to park for 30 years. Naman. And so therefore... Go ahead and target 15% per year or even 20 because this money, I'm going to need it 30 years from now. So give it to the most aggressive growth stocks out there, stocks which will benefit from, from COVID like uh, biotech and uh, lab testing and virus vaccine producing companies or companies that produce very popular products. Mm, like financial technology or robotics or automation or electronics 
things which are very much in demand in the industrial world or even agricultural products. So you'll be in touch with the rest of the world, all the news that's positive in the world, you'll be checking, gosh, uh, share price of Facebook is going up, share price of Google is going up, share price of Apple is going up, I better buy those shares. Or from Metro Manila, you can talk to a fund manager who buys international. You just invest in Metro Manila and in the Philippines, and then he will be in charge of buying those overseas shares and parking them in that fund where you are invested. And that's how you, that's called the feeder fund, which is fed by, uh, I mean, it's fed by investments from abroad and people feed money into it. And then the money goes to the overseas investments, which then give the nice profits and returns to the feeder fund in the Philippines where you are invested. <clears throat> so you can you can invest money in one or two or five such feeder funds. If you are confident in buying stocks by yourself, go ahead and do so. It's very a very rewarding experience using your brains to figure out it's like it's like using a rod and reel to catch a fish. If you're good at it, then catch the fish. If you're not good, just use a net. If you're really not good, just buy from the fish market uh, let them do all the fishing out there and i'll just buy the fish right? so it will cost you a little more but it saves you a lot of trouble okay so there's a trade-off there involved uh, for most people who are hard at work uh, do practicing their profession it's more economical to pay a, a competent professional to manage your money so that's where the mutual funds come in and also the uitf the unit investment trust funds um, I could give you one more um, lecture on UITF versus mutual funds versus insurance. Okay, so I'm going to time out right here and then I'll prepare that next lecture on how do you decide whether to be in stocks directly or in mutual funds or in UITF or insurance company funds. Okay, so... End of uh, this lecture, and I'll prepare the next one. Oh, shit.